The gaming M5 motherboard from MSI supports Intel's 8th generation of CPUs with the Z370 chipset, so let's find out what the board has to offer, how well it overclocks, and if it's a board that you should consider buying. <laughs> My first impressions of the board are that it looks really plain and clean. It's all grey and black, which is a bit different from MSI's usual red and black colour scheme. In any case, I'm a fan. It's an ATX board and comes in at 30.5cm by 24.4cm. Starting with the rear I.O, there's a PS2 port for you old school guys, three USB 2.0 Type-A ports, a clear CMOS button, display port and HDMI port, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A and Type-C port, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A ports, killer ethernet port, SPDIF out, and five 3.5mm audio jacks. While powered on, the ethernet port and two of the USB ports are lit up by red LEDs, and yeah, I forgot to install the backplate. Here's what it looks like though, so you don't miss out. There's some more I.O. on the right side, where there's six SATA 3 connectors. At the center of the board is the LGA 1151 socket, which supports Intel Coffee Lake based CPUs. And as mentioned, I'm testing with a 6 core 8700K here. Next to the socket are the RAM slots, which have MSI's steel armor. This is meant to shield the memory sticks to give better overclocking. And although the board supports up to 4000 MHz, I don't have any memory that crazy to test this. If you do plan on overclocking, make sure you consult the QVL and buy compatible memory sticks. The four slots run in dual channel and can support up to 64GB of DDR4 memory, if you're rich enough to afford that at today's prices. Two of the PCI slots are also reinforced in a similar manner to the memory slots, allowing for some beefy graphics cards. From the top down there's PCIe 16, 1, 1, 8, 1 and 4 slots, and there's support for two-way SLI or three-way crossfire. There's an M.2 slot towards the bottom of the board, amongst the PCIe slots. It's got a thermal pad and supports drives up to 80mm in length. And there's a second M.2 slot in the middle of the board, just above the PCIe slots, which supports drives up to 110mm long, and they can be run in RAID 0 or RAID 1 via the chipset. There's a debug code LED down the bottom, which is useful while troubleshooting, as well as a bunch of your typical connectors, including audio, RGB, USB, fan, TPM, and front panel headers. And in total, there are six fan headers on the board. Now with the basic info out of the way, let's install the board and try some overclocking with the 8700K. My testing has been done using the latest BIOS. I updated it prior to running anything. I'm using the Fractal S36 all-in-one CPU cooler here, and I was able to easily get the CPU up to 5.1 GHz, so a pretty nice boost. We can see in the Cinebench multi-core score there's about a 17% increase from the overclock. Although this will of course vary depending on how good the CPU that you pair with the board is. With the board powered on and running there's some RGB lighting on the chipset cover, and a strip near the PCIe slots, although both get covered up pretty well by the graphics card. The lighting can be controlled through MSI's Mystic Light Sync software, and there are a number of effects available including breathing, flashing, double flashing, marquee, stack, rainbow, which is what I've got it on, CPU temperature, and more. Or can be completely turned off if that's not your thing. To boot into the UEFI, simply press the delete key during boot. I found it really easy to navigate and quickly make changes, including overclocking. So what did you guys think of the gaming M5 motherboard from MSI? Overall, I thought the board was fairly high quality. It looked and felt nicer than my ASUS Prime Z370A. However, the ASUS board is $50 less, so that should be expected. In the US, this one's currently going for around $199 US dollars. And here in Australia, it's about $319 Australian dollars. If you're not planning on buying an unlocked CPU, then you'll probably be better off waiting until there are cheaper motherboards available. Otherwise, if you do want to overclock, pairing the M5 with an overclockable CPU looks like a good match. Compared to other options, based on the price, it seems to be a mid to high range choice. So it's got some nice features and extras, and the RGB lighting is pretty subtle and not going overboard. Be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments, as well as what motherboards you're looking to buy and why. Leave a like if you found the information useful, and don't forget to subscribe for future tech videos like this one.